solve from the positive integers x and y such that 1 over x plus 1 over y equals 1 over 6. Oh my god, it's so horrible. Hmm, from where shall we start? Hmm, the left hand side is a sum of two fractions, and the right hand side is a single fraction, and all the fractions have the same numerator, 1. So the best choice is to simplify the left-hand side firstly and then cross multiplying. How shall I simplify 1 over x plus 1 over y? Of course, it is quite easy, isn't it? 1 over x plus 1 over y. It is x plus y over x times y. I'm sorry, I didn't write it so straight. Forgive me, please. And the right hand side is 1 over 6. So now, what we're going to do is to cross multiply. xy times 1 is x times y equals 6 times the sum of x and y. Very good. Then, left hand side is x and y, and the right hand side, simplify it is 6 times x plus 6 times y. Then, I like to subtract the right hand side from the both hand sides. x times y minus 6x minus 6 times y is 0. Very good. However, now we meet a problem. Which problem? Usually, we hope that the left-hand side can be written as a product of two terms. That means it can be factorized. And the right-hand side will be a positive integer, or even an integer. So I'm going to write it an integer. Of course, the zero is an integer, no problem. The only problem is that the left hand side cannot be factorized yet. Now, I have a trick, and please learn this. Have a look at here. Please have a look. Here we have an x, here as well. So we can firstly take out an x from these two terms, and here in the bracket it's going to be y minus 6. Okay, then minus 6y is 0. The left hand side cannot be continuous factorized. Then what shall we do? Because here is no more x. So we wish that here would appear a y minus 6. The coefficient of this y in the bracket is 1. But here we have a negative 6. So now, I'd like to take out a negative 6 from here. And I'm going to write it as y minus 6. Of course, it is not possible, but I can do that. However, this 0 will be broken. We know that here is negative 6y, then minus 6 times negative 6. So it is minus, minus 36. It is plus 36. So now, here is the 36. Where does it come from? Of course, from our factorization, from our idea. If we have a 36, then we should give it back. Minus 36. Then the right hand side is still 0, but it will be broken very soon. Look, here of course I can take out a y minus 6. So it is y minus 6 times x minus 6. It is x minus 6 times y minus 6. I'm going to 
write the term about x firstly, and then the term about y. Then minus 36 equals 0. I like to add 36 on the both sides, so it is equals 36. The form has changed a lot. We have the form, the left hand side, a product, or a factorization, the right hand side, an integer, or exactly, a positive integer. We have to have a look at the intervals of x minus 6 and y minus 6. Which values can they take? Or are they allowed to have? We know that x is positive integer, greater or equal to 1, y as well. So here, if we subtract 6 from the both sides, then it's going to be x minus 6 should be greater or equal to negative 5, and y minus 6 as well. So these two terms, they should be greater or equal to negative 5. However, we know that negative 5 times negative 5 is 25. It is smaller than 36, so it's not going to be possible. So it's going to be impossible to write 36 as a product of two negative numbers in this situation, because negative 5 times negative 5 is smaller than 36. Then, let's go. How many possibilities are there? How look. 1 times 36. Or... 2 times 18, 3 times 12, 4 times 9, 5 times nothing because 36 is not divisible by 5. Then 6 times 6, 6 squared. These 6 numbers have one thing in common. Their first factors are always smaller or equal to their second factors. So that means if we change your order, it's also going to be a pair. 36 times 1, 18 times 2, 12 times 3, 9 times 4, and 6 times 6, because 6 is equal to 6, so it's no use to write them again. How many cases do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 9 cases, but I'm going to say only 5. Why? Because you can see, x minus 6 and y minus 6, these two terms are symmetric. So as soon as we get the solutions from this case, we'll get the solutions of the second case immediately. Why? Because 1 and 36 have only changed their orders, and x, y as well. So we have only 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, only 5 cases. We have only 5 cases to work with. For example, in our first case, 1 times 36, if x minus 6 is 1, y minus 6 is 36, we can get x is 7 and 42. If x minus 6 is 36, y minus 6 is 1, we can get it is 42 and 7. So the solutions will also change their orders. There are only 5 cases. Very good. Give it a shot and solve for all the pairs of solutions. Subscribe to me. We'll see you next time.